Now, you've probably already seen other videos on SMSL PS200 Pro. Everyone makes silly faces in miniatures and says it, makes, it measures excellent, and even on par with uh, DAX many times the price. So can this $85 digital to analog converter really sound as good as units many times the price? Does it really sound well and should I be making silly faces too? Let's find out, and before I will talk about some numbers, a word on my test system. I am always testing using the best available components to push the unit I'm testing to the limits and to make sure there are no bottlenecks in the chain that would affect my review. Um, so, bear in, mind, bear in mind that every single item in my setup, including cables, uh, was much more expensive than this guy. So, let's talk about some numbers. The dynamic range is specified as 125 decibels, and for something so small with uh, that type of power supply, it's just an amazing feat. Uh, signal to noise ratio is also amazing because it's also 125 decibels. Uh, total harmonic distortion plus noise and fasten your seatbelts. That one is specified as 0.00009%. So four zeros after the comma, and this basically basically means that uh, this should be crystal clean digital to analog converter. Uh, it will accept uh, everything you throw it throw at it uh, up to PCM, uh, up to 52 bits and 768 uh, kilohertz, and it will also decode DSD 512 thanks to XMOS XU 316 chipset found inside. Now let's talk about the build. In the front of the device you have a set of small LED lights indicating chosen input. Yeah, like that, just three of them, USB, optical and coaxial. Uh, it does decode MQA, so if it will detect MQA stream, it will light up this one. I have no idea why DSD uh, is uh, lighting up uh, in green. I think that may be showing that the power is connected, although it's not lighting up right now, it's just with USB. Still, it doesn't uh, cause any problems. Nothing interesting on the bottom, on the top and on the sides. In the back of the device we have a couple of inputs, one set of outputs and a switch. We have a USB input, we have optical SPDIF input, and we have coaxial SPDIF input. We have one set of RCA outputs uh, for left, right and left channels. And we also have a switch. A switch allows us to choose uh, USB mode, mode between UAC2 and UAC1. Uh, UAC1 makes this compatible uh, with uh, gaming consoles and uh, with uh, other systems uh, and it will make it not require any type of driver for Windows systems and I, as far as I remember it will be good up to 96 uh, kilohertz and uh, 24 bits if you want to have anything uh, higher than that especially if you want to use uh, ASAO drivers for uh, SMSL to have a bit perfect setup for example, with your full bar, you need to switch that to UAC2 uh, and it'll operate in full USB mode. Now, let's open this guy. In order to open this small device, we need to undo just two screws on the sides and then you can pull the board out. <clears throat> now, the board is very simple and it's very small, as you can see. Uh, what uh, can we see here? Uh, we have our Sabre uh, digital to analog converter here and we have a set of operational amplifiers. These are Texas Instruments OPA1612, uh, so quite nice operational amplifiers. Uh, two of them are working in uh, current to voltage conversion stage and one here works as a LPF low pass filter. We also have the XMOS controller, visible here, <clears throat> we have some diagnostic pins over here, and we have a couple of chips that had been sanded down, those three guys here, yep, and we 
have a couple of electrolytic cups, those small guys here, and that's basically it. Yep, let's zoom in so you can see everything in here. Yeah, and we have this small guy here that probably works as an output signal switch. So that's basically it when it comes to the build. Now we have some test points and we have a clock here. The clock is 27. I think 27 kilohertz that one and 24 megahertz that one. Or this one is also megahertz. I'm not sure. Yeah, so it's a very simple and small build here. Uh, I was wondering what this guy is about here because this is also Texas Instruments OPA 1612 but it's placed uh, in a very unusual position uh, above the digital tonal converter uh, but uh, in the comments for the first version of the video that uh, was uh, suddenly cut after the base impressions uh, one of you guys had suggested that this uh, operational amplifier is for 3.3 volts uh, filtering. So yeah, that that can be real. Okay, so let's close this guy. Let's connect the power source to have some nice lights. And let's talk about the sound quality. As you can see, it can be powered just by connecting it, connecting it to uh, some kind of PC or your console or whatever. <clears throat> okay, so let's start with the bass. I know this is irrational, but I felt like something this small would not have a deep bass. Uh, I was wrong, of course. This is a digital to analog converter and not a speaker. And we do have a very competent, deep and clear bass here. It's quite clean with full mid bass that seems to be slightly warm, but just a little. I am happy to report that mid bass is kept in check and it's controlled so it doesn't pollute the mids. Mids, the mid range. Uh, mid range is soft and it's uh, balanced with the treble and bass kept on the same level. It's not recessed and it's not pushed to the front. Yes, it doesn't have the resolution of units 3 and 5, 3 or 5, five times the price, but vocals have a proper timbre and they sound natural, without any artificial dryness or distortion. So this is a quite uh, nice fit for something so small and for something that's powered with uh, just a USB connector. Uh, treble. Treble has good extension and it seems that SMSL went for safe tuning here, as treble is very smooth. I personally would like to see, or actually hear, more zing and clarity here, as an electrostat lover, I can appreciate clear and open to end. The good thing is that this tuning means no sibilance and no listening fatigue. And you can always add one or two decibels at the top using EQ to add some clarity. Uh, just a little bit, not too much. Now, let's talk about technicalities. Let's talk about the resolution. Now, this is the area that requires good, clean power supply. Uh, PS200 Pro has good resolution for the price. I would even say that it's better than SU1 here that I've tested about a month ago or something like that. But it does lose some of the finest small details that I'm looking for in my test tracks. To be fair, you will notice that only if you have a way better reference DAC as your daily driver. Considering PS200 Pro price, the resolution is good and I can bet that it will never be a bottleneck in the similarly priced, priced setup that it will probably be used in. Now, let's talk about the sound stage and imaging. Uh, this is a very small and simple unit and I expected very little in this area. And to my surprise, I got very decent, very wide and quite deep sound stage with very good center image and some layers going behind the speakers. The instrument images are a little blurry, but they never overlap. Uh, there is enough room on the stage for every single instrument and every other sound source. So, 
technically it's quite good actually it's surprisingly good uh, so to start my summary uh, this is one of the cheapest ducks uh, on the market right now and some compromises had to be made it doesn't have a big power supply it uses power supply pro provided by USB uh, and there is no uh, room for large capacitor banks inside neither uh, but for the price you're getting a very competent small digital to analog converter that will mop the floor with any internal PC or gaming console sound card. Yes, you've heard that correctly. I may have noticed some things that could be better, but that's compared to dedicated expensive hi-fi devices. But the scene changes when you look at the scenarios for which this guy had been designed. Being an affordable step up from internal sound cards or being a simple cheap upgrade for all older CD and amplifier setups where you can squeeze it in some small space and add uh, PC or maybe console connectivity uh, to your audio gear. Uh, comparing SU1 and PS200 Pro, I would actually go for PS200 Pro. And this is a real puzzle for me. Why SMSL produces two very similar devices like that with a very similar prices too? Uh, this, guy's, this guy's regular price is $85, but I've seen that it's uh, on sale on Aoshida for $73 or something like that. Uh, yeah, it's been a black week and we are uh, during the Cyber Monday uh, today, but still this is basically lunch money, something like that. Uh, yeah, so it's, uh, it's a very, very cheap device. <clears throat> So I don't know the answer why they are producing both of them, but I hope you liked this small review and that it helped you in some way. Uh, thank you guys, thanks for watching and have a great day. See you next time.